What's up everyone, ODC, it's me here, and today's review we're going to take a look at the Mythic Legion's Covenant of Shadows Kador action figure. This is a product of the Four Horsemen, this is part of the Four Horsemen Kickstarter Wave 1.75. Um, this was included with the, um, the two trolls, the stone troll and the forest troll. This is part of that whole wave. And um, this is a really nice action figure. This was a figure that actually I didn't think I was going to like as much as I do now after I got him in hand. Um, he is a part of the Noble Bear Clan, which is a part of, which is run by Atlas the Conqueror, himself being the Barbarian King. I've introduced uh, him to all of you in my Mythic Legions part one and part two videos. If you want to go check those out, I'll leave the link in the end of this video so you can check those out. Um, taking a look at Kador here, he looks really good. He's got a really nice color palette, I think, on him. And really, even though the, the tones are kind of close to each other, I think it works really well. Um, I like the mixture of the bronze and gold going throughout his body here. And I really do like the fact that they threw a little bit of purple in there just to kind of make the figure pop a little bit and stand out from the rest of the bunch. Um, these are, I mean, this is just a really cool figure, um, especially with Kador here. He is the Barbarian Knight, um, and it's pretty cool. It's got a pretty cool little backstory. And you could check out all the bios on the side of the box. If you want to go ahead and read that for yourself instead of hearing my stupid voice read it for you, you can go ahead and read it for yourself. Um, but Kador looks really cool. He does come with a plethora of accessories right here. And uh, he does come with a Warhammer, which is pretty cool. And this is kind of what I have as far as uh, how I like to have his Warhammer set up. He does come with an accessory piece, so you can set up his Warhammer any way you want. Um, so this is pretty cool. I actually missed out on this in the 1.0 weapons pack. So I'm glad that they um, actually gave this with a character, a designated character. And uh, we should see more of these in the 2.0 wave coming out next year. Um, here is the other piece to the Warhammer, and you simply can just take the hook off here and pop this piece on if you just want to have a regular hammer for him. And you can do it any way you want, customize it any way you want. Um, and just taking this part off. You can't take this side off. This part is uh, pretty much, um, I think, molded on or glued on. I'm not sure, but uh, you can't remove that side. But you can put the hook on like that or you can twist it and have it facing upward or if you really want to and you like the way that it looks you can put it on the side like that but um, I kind of prefer it facing downward I don't know it just looks cool that way I think it does have a little bit of paint black paint shading going throughout the hammer it's not very dominant throughout so it's kind of hard to tell if you know uh, I think there's a little bit going on throughout here, throughout some of the hammer over here. I think a little bit more would have done the uh, the Warhammer a little bit more justice here. But I think overall, it looks really good. So definitely thumbs up for that accessory. Um, he does come with an extra shoulder pauldron, so you can pop that on if you want. Um, I prefer him with his one sh uh, shoulder, but uh, to simply pop the pauldron on, there's a little hole in his back right here. And you just want to find the hole, bro, and put it on. <laughs> there you go, with his other pauldron on. So you can do it any way you want. That's the cool thing about uh, Mythic Legions, their modularity. That's pretty awesome. And then he also comes with a short sword. Which is pretty cool. Or I shouldn't say a short sword. I should just say a regular one-handed sword. And then we have his much longer broad sword. And just to show, show a little bit of comparison between the two swords, in case you're curious, here they are hilt to hilt, and the broadsword's much longer. So there you go. Pretty cool uh, sculpt with both the swords. Um, he can two-hand his Warhammer here. And I'll just pop this side on. And let's just get him into a pose really quick. There we go. So there you go. You can two-hand his 
his, uh, did I say sword? He can't two, <laughs> two hand his war hammer. Excuse me. <laughs> he can't two hand his sword, but he can two hand his war hammer. So that's pretty awesome. As you can see, I put two straps going across his chest here. You can put these straps anywhere you want on him. It doesn't really matter as far as where you put it. You can put it around his waist. You could put it like going across like here. You can uh, cross them out like an X and uh, any way you want. I did it this way. This way he can hold everything because I am a I have a big pet peeve for figures not being able to carry their accessories. So I put one sword there and then I put the other sword on there like that and now he can hold both his swords and he can hold his war hammer in his hand. So I think that looks the best as far as for Kador uh, the way that looks and uh, so there you go with that. Those are all of his accessories, um, including the other shoulder pauldron, which is already on, and I explained about the straps here. Um, I like, I gave him the uh, the one pauldron simply because I think he looks really cool as a barbarian knight slash, kind of looks like a gladiator, which is pretty cool. And um, I really like this skin tone. Now I want to talk about the, the paint for a little, I do want to spend a little bit on the paint. Uh, the And like I said in the beginning of the video, uh, the plethora of of the golds and the bronze mixed together with the purples, I think really just makes this figure pop so well. And it's a nice mixture. As you can see, we got some purple here on the side of the armor, on the front here with some gold, or actually that's bronze. The little rivets here, or studs I should say on the front and then we have um pretty much the armor here and here and throughout the top here are gold except for this little portion right here i'm just going to use a sword as a pointer so you don't see my big fat fingers in the way um, this portion right here is bronze um, the portions on his his uh, gauntlets here are gold and then the top portion is bronze this is all bronze with a black paint shading going throughout it looks really good the helmet is gold um, and then you have the purple accent right and down going down the middle all the way to the back of the helmet looks really good um, this spike on top of his helmet is removable so you can swap that out with any other figures uh, like a, if you have a plume or anything like that with any of the other figures you can swap that piece out so that's something to note as well um, I just love it. Um, talking about the boots here, as you can see, we have a nice bronze right here, and then we have a gold right here, and all the black paint shading looks so good. It looks like this guy's been through battles, and that really just, oh man, I just love it. I just love it. And as you can see right here, um, as I noted in my part one and part two videos of Mythic Legions 1.0, we have um, a, a bunch of paint which is chimping off from the back of the leg here. Um, that's still a quality control issue that um, you know Mythic Legions has, and you can peel it right off, as you can see right there. It comes right off, and that's basically it's covering up the plastic skin tone color for inside the knee joint. But it actually kind of ma almost matches the the leg. The, the way the leg is painted. Hopefully in, in Mythic Legions 2.0 they kind of fix this problem. Uh, I also did notice, as you can see right here, it's blatantly obvious, um, there are some quality control issues right here with some black paint on the back of the forearms on both sides right here. Um, so that's something to note as well, but not a deal breaker by any means. Um, the uh, As long as the skin tone is the same, and as you can see here on the elbow joint, you can see some of this peeling off as well. So that peeled off, but as long as the skin tones are the same as the, the plastic joint, I don't really care. It doesn't really matter. It's unnecessary to even paint that, I think. But um, just something to note. As far as his articulation does go, he's got pretty good range of motion, pretty good articulation for single jointed um, arms or elbows and knees. Um, so let's just get into it. His head can swivel full 360 rotation. Um, it does look up by that far, so pretty decent looking up. It does look down. Um, we do have a tilt side to side as far as the head goes. Sorry, I'm not, uh, as far as the head tilt goes, side to side. The head go or the head the arms go up about that far go down full 360 rotation you have a single bend at the elbow uh, elbow swivel 
And uh, the elbow bend is about eh, a little bit less than 90 degrees. He does have a gauntlet swivel or a glove swivel and a wrist swivel as well and a wrist hinge which goes in and does go out just a little bit just a little bit so that's pretty cool he does have a diaphragm joint which does go forward about that far it does go back so there's a, a a little bit of a crunch going forward not anything crazy they don't have a traditional ab crunch um, because it would break up the sculpt i don't actually mind that as long as i can get this and this out of him and a little bit of a pivot side to side so that's really cool there and he can also swivel as well he does have t-jointed hips which go out Really nice, nice job with the uh, the leg splits there. Legs go forward, and they do go back. And he does have the upper thigh swivel, a single jointed knee, a knee swivel right here. He does have the ankle hinge, which goes forward about that far. Not the best range of motion going far, but that's due to the sculpting of the boot right there. Leg, uh, foot goes forward, and then we do have the ankle pivot side to side. Um, so that's really cool. So he's got pretty good range of motion as far as Mythic Legions go. It's your typical Mythic Legions range of motion. Um, I'm really interested to see how the uh, the 2.0 figures coming out next year are going to be for range of motion, seeing as they're on smaller bodies. So that'll be really cool. Okay, and as far as size comparisons go, um, I'll just bring in, uh, first size comparison, we'll just bring in Luke Cage here. So there he is with Luke Cage, and he's on the Hyperion body mold. Next we have uh, Batman, and this is from the DC Superheroes Mattel line. Next we have a Star Wars SH Figuarts Shore Trooper standing next to Kador. Now we have uh, the NECA Predator Dutch action figure standing next to Kador. I'd say they're probably in the same scale here. There is the WWE Elite Big Boss Man action figure. And finally, we have a Star Wars The Black Series Captain Cassian Andor standing next to Kador. So there's all your size comparisons. So overall, final thoughts on Kador here. Um, I definitely would recommend him. Two thumbs up. He's fantastic. I think he's on Big Bad Toy Store right now, so you could definitely check him out there. This is Kador. Definitely go pick him up. He's awesome. Like I said, two thumbs up here. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you guys on the flip side.